guys, it's Micah and today I'll be telling you about the reverb audio effect in Ableton Live. Now reverb is typically used to describe the sound you hear from the beginning of the sound to the end where you're not hearing anything. So if there's not a lot of reverb and you hit the table, all you're really going to hear is the table being struck, but if there is a very reverberant room, you might hear the table being struck and then the sound kind of lingers for a while longer. And that is what we typically refer to as reverb. Now I'm going to be telling you how this reverb audio effect works and I'm not going to go into insane amounts of detail. If you would like a separate video on the theory behind reverb and how it's calculated and all of that, let me know and uh, I'll see if I can make one for you. So let's give you a little before and after. I've got a vocal track and a kick drum. Let's start with the kick drum. Now my dry weight is on zero and I'm going to increase my reverb. It adds a kind of tail to it, kind of like the resonator did. You can check out that video over here if you missed that. And let's use a vocal sample. So hopefully you can hear the difference yeah, between the unreverberated yeah, yeah, sounds in your face yeah, 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 yeah. and only the reverberation sounds very far away. Yeah. Now you can change these controls to make the audio sound like it's coming from a different space, either a large cathedral or a small room with lots of carpets. Reverb is a really great tool, especially if you know how to use it. A lot of people just get by using presets, and these presets are good, I have nothing against them. But surely you want more, surely you want to understand your tools and be able to make your own reverbs. If you're not sure how to get to the presets under audio effects, go to reverb or any other audio effect. You click this little triangle and then you've got your different effects. Right, now this reverb audio effect is divided into various sections. You have your input processing, which happens right at the beginning. You've got your early reflections, which are typically your reflections that happen before 100 milliseconds. Then you've got some global controls and then your diffusion and then your final output controls. Now your input signal first passes through these high and low cut filters. You can activate or deactivate them by clicking on these rectangles and you can change the filter by clicking and dragging on this XY controller, this little circle, or manually changing the center frequency here on the left or your bandwidth on the right. Now this filter is not going to filter your actual audio signal. Your audio signal over here is going to stay the same. This is filtering your processing. Then we get to our pre-delay. Now the pre-delay controls the delay time in milliseconds before the onset of the first early reflection. So basically this will determine the length of time between when we first hear your initial audio sample and when we start hearing your reverb. That's quite a big pre-delay. It's like poof, poof. With no pre-delay, it's almost like the kick and the reverb blend into one. Then we go to our early reflections, and these are the earliest echoes that you hear after they bounce off this virtual room's walls before the onset of this diffused reverberation tail. The amplitude and distribution of the early reflections give an impression of the room's character. Now these are very subtle things that have a huge impact. If I set my reverb to 100% wet and play the kick, you're going to have to listen very carefully. I'm going to switch spin off and we're going to be talking about this shape control because this shape control sculpts the prominence of your early reflections, as well as how they overlap with the diffused sound. So if you have small values, the reflections will decay more gradually, and with large values, the reflections will decay more rapidly. See if you can hear the difference. Often a higher value can improve the sound's intelligibility, while a lower value may give a smoother decay. Now above that we've got spin, and spin applies modulation to these early reflections. This XY control, this yellow circle, accesses the depth and the frequency of these modulations. A larger depth tends to provide a less colored late diffusion response. And if the modulation frequency is too high, which you set by either moving the controller to the left or to the right, or changing the values in this bottom left rectangle, then Doppler frequency shifting of the source sound will occur, along with surreal panning effects. Now the Doppler effect is the change in frequency or wavelength of a wave for observer who is moving relative to the wave source. So for instance, if you're standing still and a lorry or a truck is driving past you while it's hooting, the pitch of the hooter actually changes as it drives away, and this is the Doppler effect. Anyway, tangent. So you can set spin on and off by clicking this rectangle over here. 
you can hear here how the spin is impacting this shape. It really is sounding a little bit more wobbly, I guess. And that's due to the modulation of the early reflections. Now we get to our global settings, and this global quality chooser controls the trade-off between your reverb quality and your computer's performance. Eco uses minimal CPU resources, while high delivers the richest reverberation, and mid is somewhere in between. The size parameter controls the room's volume. At one extreme, a very large size will lend a shifting, diffuse delay effect to the reverb. But the other extreme, a very small value, will give it a highly colored metallic feel. Let's have a listen. Almost sounds like you're in a really big passage or something. And the small one? Sounds like you're in a small bathroom. Like singing in a shower and the sound can't get out, so it's just continually reflecting on the walls really close to you. And then the stereo image control determines the width of the output stereo image. So at the highest setting of 120 degrees, each ear receives a reverberant channel that is independent of the other. And the lowest setting mixes the output signal to mono. If you're listening in mono, you won't be able to really hear that. Now we get to our diffusion network. The diffusion network creates the reverberant tail that follows the early reflections. The decay time control over here adjusts the time required for this tail to drop to a thousandth of its initial amplitude, so minus 60 dB. So if you want a really long reverb, you can have a long decay time and a shorter reverb will have a short decay time. Now you've got high and low shelving. This works similar to your input processing's low and high cut in that you can switch one of these filters off or on by clicking on these rectangles. These shelving filters provide frequency dependent reverberation decay. The high frequency decay models the absorption of sound energy due to air, walls and other material in the room, like for instance people or carpets or a big furry dog that you may have sitting on the floor next to you. And the low shelf provides a thinner decay. Each filter may be turned off to save CPU consumption, so it's always good practice to just switch off the things you're not using. Then we've got this freeze control, which I think is really cool. The freeze control freezes the diffuse response of the input sound. When this is on, the reverberation will sustain almost endlessly. Cut modifies freeze by preventing the input signal from adding to the frozen reverberation. So in a way it sort of blocks more incoming signals. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can still hear the vocal, the dry vocal, but the reverb is kind of staying frozen and static. And of course when it's off the input signal will continue to the diffused amplitude, making everything sound very murky. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got flat. If flat is off, then the frozen reverberation will lose energy in the attenuated frequency bands, depending on the state of these high and low shelving filters. And if flat is on, then it bypasses the high and low shelf filters when freeze is on. Now the chorus section over here adds a little modulation and motion to the diffusion. Like the spin section over here, you can control the modulation frequency and amplitude with your XY controller to the left and to the right, you're changing your frequency, and up and down, you're changing your amplitude, or if you don't want to use it, you can just switch it off. And again, I suggest you switch it off to save CPU power. You can really hear that vibrato in the voice with minimal chorus. Then you've got this density and scale control over here, and these parameters provide additional control over the diffusion's density and coarseness. And when the room size is extremely small, they have a large impact on the coloration contributed by the diffusion. And now we get to our output section. At the reverb output, you can adjust the effect's overall dry wet mix, which I've been doing throughout this tutorial. Dry being only hearing your dry signal without having any reverb added to it, and wet being completely reverb only. You can also vary the amplitude of the reflections and diffusions with this reflect level and these diffuse controls. Reflect adjusts the amplitude of the early reflections, whereas diffuse adjusts the amplitude of the diffusion. Now 
I suggest you take this reverb and put some headphones on or be in a very quiet room and play around with these controls and begin to distinguish the subtle differences that these controls have on the character of your sound. I'm sure that you guys know of many uses for reverb, so instead of me giving you a list of applications when to use reverb, I actually just want to warn you and say don't use it too much. I know that often beginner producers like to just pile reverb on everything, thinking that it sounds cool, but too much reverb can really make a production sound very murky, not have definition, a bit too all over the show, and simply unbalanced. But that said, reverb used really well can make all the difference. I'm a huge fan of the way David Guetta used reverb in Titanium. So if you're looking for a case study, I suggest you have a listen to that song. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned tons new about reverb. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm doing a video like this for all the audio effects in Ableton Live. In fact, if you've been with me from the start, you'll know this. And we've almost reached the end. So I'm very excited for that. But I'll see you again in a few days in the next one.